All right, yeah, we live. Shalom, to the Hebrew Israelites, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Double honor to the elder apostles, the great millstone who told us his truth. Salutations to the elect. And uh, we the brothers of Great Millstone, New York. And, you know, it's the New Year's Eve of destruction as the apostles, you know, started the trend through the spirit. Um, it's December 31st, 2022, which this was the year that our elder apostle Tahar coined the year of Yahweh Bashim Shai turning things up. And as we've been observing the times and, you know, this year basically flew by. It just, you know, it, this year was the quickest year of my life. And everything that happened this year is all leading up. It's all a build up of prophecy, you know, because that's the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So we're going to get into these prophecies and pretty much what 2023 is going to be about through the spirit, you know, is that this devil, the so-called white man who's Esau Edom, starting with the central bankers, they're going to bring in the CBDC which is a central bank digital currency. So any nation who's getting their money from um, from the central bankers, from the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, so on and so forth, they're going to start introducing their people, you know, whichever nation and country it is, they're going to start introducing this uh, digital currencies. You see it going on right now in China, in um, Jamaica, you have the Jamdex, and here in America, especially in New York, they, they're uh, piloting a 12-week program as we speak of running the, uh, the United States digital dollar. You know, so th this is what's happening. This is the prophecy of the market of East is coming in. You know, that's what we're expecting. That's what we're anticipating for 2023. You know, the MOTB, the prophecy of the RFID, CHIP, you know, coming into play, coming into being mandatory, because as the prophecy says, so... Um, if y'all got any opening points or scriptures, you know, you could go right ahead. Um, I was going to say, um, yeah, pretty much, you know, what the elite banking families want to do is they want to cause a global economic collapse and bring in an entirely new system. They want a cashless digital society to where they have 100% control. So the fiat currency that we use, the paper money, they want to do away with that. And now you're seeing something new being brought in, the central bank digital currency. Now, this is going to transition to, like the brother said, to the sea hit, and that's going to be made mandatory very soon. So this is one of the final prophecies that's going to take place. That's right. Oh, shit. I had second Maccabees. Let me get um second Ezra's nine and one okay. real quick. Yep. This is uh the book of second Ezra chapter nine, verse one. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. All right. So all these prophecies, which are the signs that the Lord gave to the prophets, the visions, those are measurements of time. That's how we measure time, because, again, the spirit of Yahweh Shai, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So meaning all these prophecies, even from going back to Adam, going back to Enoch from the very beginning, the prophets that have been since the world began, Luke 1 and 70, they all prophesied about Yahweh Shai. But there was a, a particular time, there is a particular time that only the Heavenly Father Yahweh knows in which Yahweh Shai is going to come and visit this world to judge it. And we don't know that time. Nobody on this earth knows that time. But what we do have are the signs that the Lord gave us, the prophecies. All right, and the MOTB is pretty much the biggest indicator of prophecy that Yahweh Shai is near. All right, because everything after that, like the elder apostle Tar always says, after that prophecy comes into play, when they make it mandatory, everything's going to move quick. Because the scriptures speak about, you know, the days of Noah, how the days of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man, is like the days of Noah. And during the time of Noah, he was prophesying for a long time, 120 years plus. You know, he was building that ark. He was preparing for that flood, even though the people didn't believe. But guess what? When the day came that, that it started raining from heaven, you know, he was on the ark. His family was on the ark. And guess what? The rest of the people that wasn't, that didn't take heed to those prophecies, they were pretty much locked out. And that's what we're seeing going on right now. For the past two weeks here in New York, you know, we didn't even have, like, formal camp. We wasn't even out on the highways and byways. What is that showing you? That's a famine of hearing of the word. That's, that should be a measurement of time. 
you know, we all felt a little like, you know, like funny. You know, it was like a different feeling. I, I'm speaking for all of us, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> I spoke to brothers, you know, based on the testimonies of brothers. Like, it, it's not a, it's not normal to not have camp, you know, for two weeks. But guess what? That's a part of measuring the time too, because that just shows you that that famine of the word is is near. You know what I'm saying? So we already told you what we needed to tell you, man. Starting with the elder apostles of Great Millstone, we already told you. You already see what's happening, man. The CBDC is already rolling in. So once that chip is mandatory, excuse me, the C hip, slack here. Once the C hip is mandatory, it's not going to be much time until the Heavenly Father is going to visit this world through His Son Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, um, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. All right. So even from the beginning, it tells you in Isaiah 46 and 10 that the Most High declared the end from the beginning. All right. So once again, the end is, is what Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And that begins with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is going to come and bring an end to this world, the so-called white man's world, Esau's world. You know, all this CBDC, all this talk of the um the AIs and living, you know, having Im immortality through technology. Yeah, how is going to put an end to that? That's not biblical. That's not scriptural. The only way you could get everlasting life is through Yahweh Shai. And the only ones that can get everla everlasting life through Yahweh Shai are the Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So we, we well understand these things, man. We read the scriptures daily we search the scriptures because in them is found life and we could see that the days that are spoken before we was even born which is the prophecies of the scriptures is is coming upon us right now all right we could see that so um y'all got it if you got any scriptures or points you know yeah now brothers have mentioned cbdc with San for central bank digital currency this is from the federal reserve.gov hmm. Again, this is from the Federal Reserve.gov. That's a source. <laughs> it says the CBDC is a digital form of central bank money that is widely available to the general public. Central bank money refers to money that is a liability of the central bank. Now, a liability from Google. Recorded on the right side of the balance sheet, liabilities include loans, accounts payable, mortgages, deferred revenues, bonds, warranties, and incurred expenses. Liabilities can be contrasted with assets. Liabilities refer to things that you owe or have borrowed. Mm. Assets are things that you owe or are owned. When you look on a company's balance sheet, you'll notice the term liability, which is just the uh, word. So again, central bank money refers to money that is a liability or an asset, in this case, of the central bank. Hmm. In the United States, there are currently two types of central bank money. The physical currency issued by the Federal Reserve and digital balances held by commercial banks at the Federal Reserve. Now, what are commercial banks? Commercial banks are financial institutions which accepts deposits from the public and give loans for the purposes of consumption an investment to make profits, i.e. J.P. Morgan, Chase. And these are some examples of commercial banks. Okay. While Americans have long held money predominantly in digital form, for example, in bank accounts, payment apps, or through online transactions, a CBDC would differ how so from existing digital money available to the general public, i.e. cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a form of digital money or asset or liability that is available to the general public. However, the difference between CBDC, C's, and cryptocurrencies 
or that cryptocurrencies, according to Investopedia.com, concerning what is a central bank digital currency, it is stated, or actually, before I even get to this part, let me just type this out real quick. Cryptocurrencies are considered um, decentralized finance because they're not overseen by a central authority such as a central bank. Now, it states here on Investopedia.com that in the U.S., the Federal Reserve and Securities and Exchange Commission set to find the rules for centralized financial institutions like commercial banks, like banks and brokerages, which consumers rely on to access capital and financial services directly. DeFi challenges this centralized financial system by empowering individuals with peer-to-peer digital exchanges. DeFi eliminates the fees that banks and other financial companies charge for using the services for their using their services. Individuals hold money in a secure digital wallet can transfer funds in minutes and anyone with an internet connection can use DeFi. So the summary is that DeFi, i.e. crypto, poses a direct threat to CBDCs. Hence the reason why over the past month or so we've been seeing and hearing of reports of certain high officials in the, in the industry dropping dead, hmm. you, you know, just out of nowhere. And then you had an incident with FTX going bankrupt right around the same period that the brother had mentioned earlier when the Federal Reserve of New York had began a 12-week pilot program of issuing out CBDCs. Mm -hmm. So again, CBDC, according to federalreserve.gov, would differ from existing digital money available to the general public because a CBDC would be a liability of the Federal Reserve. So you see that? Yep. It won't yep. be a, it won't be a liability of uh individual that they can just simply do whatever they want, whenever they want, how they want with it. No. It will be an asset of the Federal Reserve, not of a commercial bank. Because why? Because it will be centralized. And this is basically the groundwork of so um, being able to utilize the C ragamuffin, okay? Now, you know, you brothers and few sisters, you should know what we mean by by now when you say those things. The C hip, karate, C ragamuffin code is just basically the, the mark of the beast, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, you know, for you out there that didn't know prior what the CBDC is and how it ties into the prophecy. So yeah. I just wanted to bring that out to add on to what you guys were saying. I got a scripture for you, bro. This is um, Proverbs 22, verse 7. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So the rich, at this point right now, the rich is talking about Esau, the so-called white men. You know, why are they the rich? Because they have the world. They got the fatness of the earth, according to the blessing that Isaac gave Esau in Genesis 27. He gave them the blessing of the fatness of the earth and of the sword. And how they got rich was, um, I had this quote here from this website. I mean, I just, this is just a random website, history.stockexchange.com. And um, this is a quote that, you know, the apostles taught us. And when you look it up, they said it, this quote was from Mayor Amschau Bauer Rothschild. And it says, give me power, give me control over a nation's money, and I care not who makes its laws. And that's because they understood the international banking families. They actually understand that as long as you have the people in debt, according to the Bible, because debt is biblical, you know, usury is biblical. It's against the law, but it's biblical. All right. Usury, you're not supposed to charge usury when you loan somebody money. But even if you loan somebody, let's say, I'm just talking in modern terms, if you loan somebody $100, even your own fellow Israelite man, according to the law, he owes you the $100. If he can't pay that back, he becomes your servant. All right, he actually has to work on your land or do something to pay that money back. All right, that's an ancient principle is the borrower is servant to the lender. 
If I'm loaning you money, you pretty much owe me money. But what the central bankers do do the you know the international banking system is they charge usury, which is basically the interest rate. And that's how they've enslaved the whole world. That's how they've enslaved all the nations of the earth. All right. It's through the raw child banking system, which says give and it says this is the actual quote. Um, because this this quote supposedly was made in 1838. So it says, permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes his laws. All right, so these people, they pretty much have control over these nations. They have control over the nations of the world because they've enslaved them through debt, through the central <laughs> banking system. All right, so now that they're bringing in the CBDC, these nations don't have a choice. America is in $32 uh, trillion dollars of national debt. They don't have a choice to not accept the CBDC. They don't have a choice. They have to accept it, even if they wanted to or didn't want to. That's the only way that the central bank is going to reclaim their debt. That that and all these could, nations. Oh, go ahead, bro. If I, if I can make a quick point, you know what a lot of you people don't understand is the central bankers they own and run the Federal Reserve. So the same right. way how we you know print our money, we got the twenty dollar bills, we got the fiat currency. This is their system. So if they want to come in with an entirely new system, you have no choice but to comply to it. You know. Exactly. So everything yeah. that they're doing is all with finance. The chip is dealing is dealing with finance too because what are they doing? The CBDC all around the world, they're coming up with a one world currency that they want to put on a device. So that's what these people is not understanding. They're going to push this thing like it's a thing of convenience. We're trying to combat inflation. You know, we, we're trying to save the world, but they're looking to a way to overthrow you, to put you in a pit, you know? Right. I got another scripture real quick. This is um oh you had some corner wife, you want to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say that the chip will also be associated with a person's social credit score. Mm -hmm. Now a social credit score which originated from China is a national credit rating and blacklist being developed by the government of the People's Republic of China. Now we're going to say that eventually this will spread worldwide right. when they mandate the chip globally. The Social Credit Initiative calls for the establishment of a record system so that businesses, individuals, and government institutions can be tracked and evaluated for trustworthiness. Mm. There are multiple different forms of the social credit system being experimented experimented with excuse me while the national regulatory method is based on blacklisting and whistling or whitelisting excuse me and whitelisting is basically a whitelist allows or pass list is a mechanism which explicitly allows some identified entities to access a particular privilege service hmm, I wonder what that makes us think about M mobility or recognition ie is a list of things allowed when everything is denied by the fault <laughs> so those that don't have that chip they will be denied they will be denied access to society by the fault right it is the opposite of a blacklist hmm. so basically if you if you're on a, a blacklist on the ESA's uh, social credit system, you you'll be you'll be labeled as uh, somebody that's anti-society, anti, -society, anti uh, ESO, so so to speak, <laughs> and whitelist. Not anti-Semitic, I. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's because Remember what did they say in that recent to... article? So yeah. like, so like. Now now they're, trying, they're trying to tie. They're trying to tie those that are anti, so-called anti. Um, joke, with, right? Um, you know, people that, that those are those that are so-called anti-Semitic, uh, right? But anyway, <laughs> it says the program is mainly focused on businesses and is very fragmented. This they'll, that they'll see that 
And mm -hmm. contrary to the popular misconceptions that it is focused on individuals and is a centralized system, well, it, it is a centralized system. In fact, it is a fascist system. Okay. Um, this is from Google. They have an image of a uh, social credit system. I mean, social credit score. It says some. It says the game of life. Are oh, you looking up on Google? China's social credit system expands the idea of a standard credit check to all aspects of life. Each citizen is assigned 1,000 points, monitored to judge their behavior, and rated accordingly. And those that are rated, rated poorly will be placed in the blacklist, as we just read from the Wikipedia. And those that uh, behave accordingly, those that are rated good, according to ESO, Edom's uh, coming New World Order system, will be rated um, in and placed inside of the whitelist. Okay, they'll be, uh, be able to access certain privileges that those that, you know, are in the blacklist won't be able to have. And ultimately, those that won't have that chip, you know. So that's it. Come on, I got something real quick. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, brother. You got real quick. This is on um, Second Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, least Satan should get an advantage of us. Now, when you go into that word Satan in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, that word there, Santana, is in the Greek, referring to a Satan-like man. Because who is Satan's physical counterpart on the planet Earth? The Edomites, which is the so-called white man in sea line, right? Because look at Hollywood. Look how corrupt and evil all them satanic rituals that they do. This man is a devil. Listen to the music. You know, feminism, men being effeminate, the vibration of that, um, Babylon the Great is wicked. So it says, should get an advantage of us. How will he get an advantage over you if you're not following prophecy? If you're not linking the current events up with Bible prophecy to understand the time period you're living in. It says, for we, right, the elect of the nation of Israel, the believers, are not ignorant of his devices. When you go into this word devices, the word there is Nayama, and what is it going to say? A mental perception, a thought, an evil purpose, that which thinks the mind, thoughts, or purposes, which is going to lead you back to the word conspiracy. Because what is a conspiracy? A plotting of evil by a group of people. Whose new world order agenda is this? The so-called white man in sea line, beginning with the central bakers on down, which are the Edomites. What's the conspiracy? To cause a global economic collapse and implant you with a microchip implant. And this is what this whole system is about. Q was just bringing it up. Talking about the um the credit system that they're doing, you know, Big Brother cameras in the air, surveillance watching you. This is what they want to do because they have a god complex about them, you know. Yep. And um, you made a good point, bro, because it says least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And the us is obviously talking about the hopeful elect, you know, because the apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinth, which was the believers, you know, Israelite believers. And how how do we, you know, how are we not ignorant is because we have the will of Yahweh Bashim Hashad through the prophecies. We know the prophecy. And that's why these camps, you know, they're, they're compromised. These other Israelite camps, if they're not telling you that the mark of the beast is what we're saying that it is, they compromise because that's making you ignorant of his mm. devices, that's making you ignorant of what his intention really is behind the CBDC and everything that's going on, which this is how we know. This is uh, Proverbs 16 and 1, the preparations of the heart of of the heart in men and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So like you say, you went into the word noema, which or neo, uh, however you say it in Greek, it pretty yeah, much naima. means, uh, yeah, naima, it means like the thoughts, right? The, you know, what's in a man's mind, his, his plans. Mm. And it just tells you right here that the preparations of the heart, which the word heart in Hebrew is lab, which means your mind. You know the seat of your thoughts where your spirit dwells it comes mm. from the lord so your mm. thoughts come from the lord so this man devising this whole plan of a rfid chip and you know uh, locking the whole world down and all that that's really according to the bible that's how mm. we're not ignorant because the lord gave yep. us the prophecies and I'm, I'm gonna get another quick precept um first peters i think it is two um no select it first peter one or it might be second peter one because that's what that's what these people don't understand these people they don't understand the most high he's always in control anyway you know these people right. thinking that 
you know, this conspiracy theory of, you know, martial law, economic collapse, you know, RFID chip implants. This is all according to the will of Yahweh Basham El Shai. It's in the Bible. That's why it's happening. It's not just happening because this man is so powerful. His technology is so great. He's the greatest guy ever. No, the most high is in control. You know what I mean? Right. And that that's how and it's not because we just conspiracy theorists, because that's what they would like to label us, label us as. Mm -hmm. Is that what we are teaching and what we are speaking about is like we're theorizing or we assuming what they want to do we're not assuming nothing because we have the prophecy this is second peter 1 and 20 and that's what gives us the advantage you know if you know your enemy's next move you have an advantage over him just like in chess you know the whole objective in chess you're trying to take down your enemy you know you got to plan out like moves ahead well we already know what he's going to do in the next However long it takes, man. Lord willing, you know, we hoping 2023 be that year. We hope every year is that year, well, man. When 2022 <laughs> came, we said the same thing. But here it is, you know, December 31st, bro. In a couple of hours, it's going to be 2023. And we hoping that, Lord willing, this is be the year that the Most High make this devil, you know, for brain to see him. Because well, this, this is what it said. Yeah, Babaka <laughs> Shah, for real, bro. <laughs> Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So this is not any private interpretation of us reading the scriptures, bringing out the MOTB. We're showing you the facts, man. We're proving it through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Washai that we know exactly where this is heading to. When the mm -hmm. when the first, you know, when the C-19, you know, first appeared and all that, it was like we was calling it every step of the way through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Washai, the men of Great Millstone, through the videos we were doing, through the street ministry, when we was out there still through the so-called pandemic we were still prophesying everything every step of the way when they mm -hmm. brought the the jab you know when they hit people with the jump shot we told you people not to get it man now you had the other camps that were saying well go ahead and take it you know if you need to keep your job go ahead and take it and now look what's happening people are dropping dead mm -hmm. you got yep. the documentary on or die suddenly you know which that was actually on netflix it was on netflix i think it was only on netflix for a few days or about a week before they took it down and now you know you could watch it on rumble but it pretty much showing you that all the people that took that jump shot at any point in time you walking out you know walking down the street you could just drop dead man you chilling in your living room on your couch you could just die you know what i'm saying so this is not a private interpretation of what we're telling you we told you this was going to happen and now you're seeing it happen it says for the prophecy came not in the old in old time by the will of men meaning Again, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not something that we all sat down. I, I didn't know these brothers from a hole in the wall, all right? <laughs> yes. I didn't know none of these men from nowhere, all right? This wasn't my will that I would meet these brothers and we would all know the same the same truth, so to speak. That's by the will of Yahweh by Shem Shai. This is not something that we sat down and we knew each other for years and we, yeah, yeah, I think the Bible is saying this. This is what I think it means. No, the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Shai, the Holy Spirit, Rakah Kodash hit us and open up our mind to this understanding, which is the prophecies right. that we read in of old. What was that? No, I said, no, that's right. Matter of fact, I got nah. something real quick, if you don't mind. Nah, nah. Go ahead, bro. Nah, you got it. You know, that, that's a heavy thing, man. You got brothers coming from all walks of life, and the Lord got us yep. together, right? This is Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. It reads, gather yourselves together, yet gather together, O nation not desire. And we know who that nation is. That's the nation of Israel. The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. How are we being gathered? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. And the Lord gave us 100% truth. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Meaning what? Through Yahweh Shai, we will have the understanding of these prophecies. You know? That's right. That was it? Yeah, that was it right there. All right, so I'm gonna go back. It says, "For the uh, Second Peter one and twenty one, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit." All right, so these men, it tell you in the book of I think it's in Proverbs or Psalms, that the Most High gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it, because when these men had these particular visions and dreams, remember in Numbers twelve and six, it says, "That's when um you know Miriam rose up against uh." moses and aaron they're you know her brothers and pretty much she was they pretty much israel was like yo who made y'all prophets like you know why can't we all be prophets and they had that attitude like you know who like man there's something that jake be saying it, it kind of just slipped my mind but like 
you know, like, who's this nigga? You know, that's kind of like the attitude they had towards Moses. Like, who the fuck yeah. you set us? You know, who the fuck yeah, set you up over us and shit? But that's, it happens through the Holy Spirit because the Most High speaks. He speaks through the prophets, man. He gives the prophets visions. The prophet, when, when you read in um, Daniel, the second chapter, when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream and he was troubled because he couldn't remember it. You know, sometimes you have a dream and you might remember like little fragments of it and you want to remember the whole thing. You're like, damn, that was a good dream or like, it was something about the dream that you like. I, w I wish I could remember more, or like more detail mm -hmm. about it. And that's how Nebuchadnezzar was. And he basically called to his magi's and the Chaldeans and the witches and warlocks, and they couldn't tell him. And he, they, they even told him like, "Yo, what you asking for is impossible. No man on the earth is going to be able to tell you the dream that you had that you forgot. Like you can't even tell us a dream. How are we supposed to interpret it? And what it, what ended up happening when the when the servant, when the captain of Nebuchadnezzar's army came." To kill because he sent out an order he said if y'all can't tell me my dream i'm gonna kill all of you and he sent out his armies to go kill everybody all the wise men which was even including israelite men that was in captivity which daniel was amongst them you know daniel prayed he said no nah. he prayed to the heavenly father like please send me the vision that he had send me the dream that he had and what was that dream of the statue you know that famous image of the statue which is the head of gold mm -hmm. You know the breasts of silver so on and so forth going down the line you know and pretty much i said all that to say this is that whenever the men of the lord the holy men like it says but holy men of the most high spake that was by the visions that they received all right they were just breaking down or speaking the visions and whatever the lord told them to say whatever they saw in their dreams on the vision in the night like i tell you in job 33 you know they were speaking those things man this is not no regular fucking dream, bro. It ain't like, oh, I had a dream. I won the lottery. You know what I'm saying? And that's <laughs> going to be written in the Bible. Nah, man. This is heavy end time prophecy. Habakkuk, the second chapter, tells you that the things, you know, the visions were for appointed times. Meaning these men actually saw times in the future. They saw historical times that would take place in the future. And all they could do was write it down because they didn't understand it. If they saw missiles, they couldn't tell you it was a missile because there was no such thing as missiles back then. So they recorded it and documented it the best way we the best way they could. And now we come through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah through the Holy Spirit. All right, beginning with the apostles, and we're able to interpret these prophecies, man. And we're able to also utter it and explain to you what it's talking about. All right, whether you hear or forbear, whether you believe or not, because at the end of the day, we just a vessel. If you believe in what we're saying, then Lord willing you the elect, Lord willing we the elect. We don't have control over that you know we we can't make you get it <laughs> if, if the holy spirit is working with you you're going to be moved by the holy spirit you're going to understand what we're saying and it's going to make sense all right we're not just talking out of our ass we got the scriptures we bringing out what's going on in the news we filtering it through the scriptures and we showing you that this is indeed what this prophecy is talking about this is what the men of the lord saw in their visions that's it come can you please give me Isaiah 29, verse 15? You want it done because um, the Lord had mentioned earlier the word conspiracy. Yep. And the word conspiracy, it means to breathe together. Con means with, spy means to breathe. And <clears throat> the elites of Esau, Edom, they seek deep to hide their counsel. Their counsel is their conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want you to look up the word hide in Isaiah 29, verse 15, bro. Oh, okay. Babu Kasha. And then when you do, please scroll down to the Hebrew child, the lexicon, for the word hide, which in the Hebrew is I mach. I ma and kwa, I mach. Okay, which means to be deep, be profound, make deep. But when you go down to the Hebrew uh, Chaldee lexicon, um, is it definition two? That's to conceal. No, 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 no. It's it's okay. for the word. Um, actually, not not. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Um, is it? Hold on. I'm sorry. It's lock your brother. Yeah, yeah. Take just making sure. I'm just making sure. Yeah, man, ain't ain't no excuse for Jake, man. 
You know, right. yeah. scripture say that this gospel is going to be preached into the ends of the earth and then the end is going to come. Yeah. The reason, the look, reason why you're seeing this, you know, CBDC in the chip, because, yo, it's almost the end. You know? Yeah. Right. Look up the word. Um, the word I actually meant to say, bro, is deep. Oh, okay. Before high, deep. Yeah. Look up the word deep. A mock. I mock. Yep. And scroll down. All right. To the. Got it. Charlie, that's kind of, you'll see that it says to be on what? To be unsearchable. To be unsearchable. Done. So let me reread Isaiah 29, verse 15. It says, Woe, which means destruction. Woe, destruction unto them, the elites of Esau, Edom, that seek deep, that seek to hide their counsel or to conspire in a way that is unsearchable. Okay. Their counsel from the Lord Yahweh and their works are in the dark because everything that's in the dark, you can't see it until the light shines upon it. And they say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? But this is a very foolish sentiment by the them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord because this is what the Lord said in Jeremiah, what is that, 23? Verse 23, it says, I am, am I a power at hand? Save the Lord and not a power, a power of war off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Shall, shall not see him. Save the Lord Yahweh. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Save the Lord Yahweh. So it's a very foolish thought that they have to think that the Lord don't see <laughs> what they're doing. And what they're conspiring against the saints, against the elect. That's why the scripture says we are not ignorant of any devices because the Lord pretty much put us, put us on game. Right. So we already know ahead of time what these elites uh, conspire about anyway. Mm -hmm. And the things that are written in the scriptures are not conspiracy theories. They are, they are conspiracy facts. They are right. facts that have been bred together by the will of the heavenly for the hour. And they're spoken to the mouth of his prophets so things that we're speaking they're not uh theory they're facts okay that's why the scripture says all things that are written the fourth time um not only are they written for our learning but they're not written with any uh private interpretation mm -hmm. so i just wanted to um bring on you know bring this out to you know based on what you were talking about earlier God. concerned work conspiracy so um, from here, you know, get some more into the prophecy, the chip, destruction, whatever the spirit. Yep. I got a few allows. I got some. This is uh, Job chapter 5, verse 12. It says, He disappointeth the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. All right. And their enterprise, when you go into ent the word enterprise in the Hebrew, um, hold on. Yeah, that's a that's a hard word to pronounce. I'm not even gonna try that one. But I have to put the audio on for that one. <laughs> you know you're gonna say that shit in the Yahudi. You know, I'm not even gonna do that, but yeah. It says wisdom, uh sound knowledge, because that's what they think they you know, that's their enterprise. They they think that what they're doing, they think that they're so wise, you know. They mm -hmm. think that they're pretty much they got all the knowledge that they you know that they need to fulfill what they want to fulfill which is the basically the new world order so it says sound knowledge success sound or efficient wisdom abiding success and even says it again in the definition 1b abiding success so we know that just like the brother brought out through the will of yahweh by shimei shot through the prophecies we know what these devils are up to we know what they want to do we know their inward thought this thing is so heavy that having this truth it's like we read in their minds and we never even met these people before we never even saw them face to face but we able to read their minds through the inspiration of yahweh by shimei Shai because of prophecy man because we already know that the lord he controls the mind of the kings all right proverbs 21 the king's heart is in the hand of the lord and he turned it whatever wherever he will but before he does that guess what amos 3 and 7 he's going to let his prophets know before the, the every kingdom when you look at uh jeremiah isaiah daniel all the prophets are old before the kingdom ever fell before the king ever made a foolish decision that caused his kingdom to to be destroyed or whatever it may be the prophets were on the scene and they already knew 
They already knew that that kingdom was going to be destroyed because the heavenly father, right. Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shah, let him know. All right, it's no different in this time. We know that his hands cannot perform his enterprise, man. His devices, his his inward thought, like we brought out the word early in the Greek, he can't perform it, man. He can't fulfill what he actually wants to do, which they will be able to, you know, see hip a lot of the population of the earth. But remember, before the sea hip comes, they want to actually kill the majority of these people. They don't have eight billion um sea hips. They don't have eight billion of them. They're not planning on that's too much work, bro. Eight billion people, you gotta bro, they just gonna kill a lot of these people. The remaining people, that's who they plan to see hip. And then that's how they want to control and have a biting success. They don't just want to see hip everybody and that's it. That plan is to lock in their dominion. Mm -hmm. if they, they, they feel like in their mind, if we could see hip everybody, at least the population, and we could control them, we'll be able to sit in power forever. But that's mm -hmm. not according to the prophecy, man. That's why I said in the next verse, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. So the Lord is allowing these devils to believe that they will do that because the pride of their heart have deceived them. They believe they're going to be able to do that. Otherwise, why would they be going forward with their plans? If you you know, if you don't believe in something, you're not going to actually go forward and try and do it. You have it starts where you believe in it. It starts with in your mind. You mm -hmm. saying I could do this. Same way with us, you know, wanting to be delivered, and we believe we will be delivered. That's why we do the work. All right, we give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Because we believe that we're the elect, but through humility, we say we're the hopeful elect. Well, guess what? These devils, they're not humble. They don't have humility. They're moving with their plans and full pride, man. Headstrong, like I said, headlong, forward. They're forward in their council. They're going to kill a lot of people. They're going to bring this. This is actually going to happen. They're going to bring the sea hip, man. And they're going to think that through that, they're going to have abiding success. They, their enterprise is going to be crowned with success. Like it tells you on the American dollar. That's issued by the the central bank. It says, "Um, Otis, uh, I, I kind of forgot how it says it in Latin, Novus Seclorum, something to that effect. Ovis nor Novus Seclorum, which means um, a one world order. And then it also says, um, you know, by uh, um, our enterprise is crowned with success. I forgot how it says it in Latin. I knew it corruptus. Yeah, I knew it corruptus. Co right. So they actually believe that, and that's how the Lord got them in the trick bag. Because if they had any doubt, and they were like had any type of sense, you know, and uh, wisdom, they wouldn't even go forward with this because they know they're going to have to face Yahweh Shai. They know that Yahweh Shai is going to come and destroy them with the chariots, with so-called UFOs. So they wouldn't even go forward with it. But the Lord got them deceived, man. The deceive and the deceive are his. He got them thinking that they crafty. They, yeah, we came up with this plan. We're going to do this. You're not going to do nothing. The, this is all the Lord's will. Every move that they make, as you can see, we bringing out scriptures on it, man. It says they meet with darkness in daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. And what does that mean, man? The, the gross darkness, the ignorance, man. These people got the whole world in darkness. And here it is. They're, they're meeting up in darkness themselves. And their counselors are nothing but darkness. That they literally talking about things that, like it says in Psalm, the second chapter, the imaginations of the heathen is vain. It roughly paraphrases. Everything that they're sitting there and thinking about and yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. It's all darkness because they don't really have the light. They don't really know Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai didn't tell them the actual future. Like, they don't really know exactly what's going to come. They think they have an idea. They may be proud to believe, oh, you know, this is what we're going to do. But what they're doing is actually the Heavenly Father's will. There's no such thing as free will. Every man's thoughts come from the Lord, as I read earlier. So even though wicked thoughts on the left-hand side, when they sit there and counsel in darkness and all that, it's all according to the will of the prophecies of the Lord, what we're reading in the Bible. They're not doing nothing that's not scripted here in the scriptures. So they can't surprise us. They can't hit us with nothing that we don't know. You know, every move they make, we already know that they're going to make it before they even do that. And that's the blessing of having the spirit of prophecy, man, the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Come I got something real quick. Mm -hmm. This is um Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now, who is the wicked according to the scriptures? The Edomites, Malachi one and four, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into this word revealed in um second Thessalonians two and eight, the word there is ap apocalypto in the mm -hmm. Greek. Right? That's revelation. That's how you say revelation. Yep, that's how you say revelation, yep. which means to reveal. 
Yep. And it says to uncover, lay open what has been veiled or covered up. Now, what's been veiled or covered up? The truth. This man's identity. He deals with secrecy being hidden. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna give you another example of that. The um the Forbes list of people that's the richest in the world. You don't never see the central banker's name there. Why? <laughs> because they deal with secrecy. They deal with being hidden. But now, how are they being revealed through the Holy Spirit, through the prophets? And that's why the scriptures say what? Great fear fell upon them because now they're scared. They paid all this money to try and hide the truth, but the spirit of the Lord always comes out on top. They still been revealed as the Edomites, right? So it says, disclose, make bare. We're making them bare. We're exposing them through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim al Shai about their new world order agenda, how they plan to implant you with a chip. You know, it's, it's not no conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. That's According right. to the scriptures, it says to make known, make manifest, disclose what before was unknown. Because mm -hmm. when John was on the island of Patmos, he didn't know what he was looking at. It was a vision. It was meant up to the apostles on down, the brothers of Great Millstone, to break it down in these last days for the world, right? But ultimately Israel with the M-A-R-K of the beasts. So this man has been revealed. I'm going to finish it up. It says, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Who's the spirit of the Lord's mouth? The prophets. And who prophets. does that begin with? The apostles, the elders, and the brothers of Great Millstone. It says, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Who's that referring to? Yahweh Shai. It says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Satan. All right. Who, who's that? That's, that's the Edomites. It says, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And that's a lying wonder. His technology, the CBDC, mm -hmm. the chip. Finishing yeah. it off, it says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, two-thirds of the nation of Israel, unbelievers, because they receive not the love of the truth. And this is what we bring into the world. We have 100% truth. You think the Most High is going to allow a nation to be on the planet and not reveal their plan? You think this new world order agenda is not in the scriptures? It's in the scriptures, Revelation 13. It says that they might be saved. So the Lord is only dealing with the elect at the end of the day. The elect is going to preach the gospel, which involves what? Talking about the chip. So Nate and all these guys, hey, at least you repent, you're going to be destroyed, man. Because you know what the chip is. You know that the chip is the karagma. That's right. I got a precept for you, bro. You could break it down. Uh, this is Isaiah 42, verse 9. It says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Yeah, what's the what's what's the former things? The prophecies that already took place that became secular history. But you had prophets that had visions of the end. All right, you had prophets that had visions of things that they didn't necessarily get to live to see. But now we seeing these things. You can you read that again, Babakusha? Done. Isaiah 42 and 9. It says, Behold, the former things that are come, the former things are come to pass, and now like I'm gonna start over. Isaiah mm -hmm. 42 and 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Yeah, so now what's the new things? The prophecies that we live in to see right now. All right, the mm -hmm. prophets they had it as a vision back then. They they couldn't break it down, they don't know what they was looking at. They didn't know about Babylon the Great being America, but they saw in the vision that it was going to be destroyed by fire. Now, us, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, we can actually break this down and tell you the vision of what the prophet saw, you know? Right. And, um, that was it? Yeah, that was it. You got okay. Something? So, I was just going through some other translations of isaiah 29 verse 15 and one that i found very interesting was the niv i'm sorry not the niv the um where is it at the net version of isaiah 29 <laughs> verse yeah, I see it right here. NIV. Yeah, yeah, the now, NET. the NET stands for New English Translation. Yeah, that's heavy. It reads, those who tried to hide their plans from the Lord Yahweh 
are as good as dead. <laughs> Who do their work in secret and boast? Who sees us? Who knows what we're doing? And this is, again, the proud sentiment of the elites of East or Edom. Mm -hmm. They who come together in the dark during the day and croak during the noonday, if I'm not mistaken, according to what is written. Yeah, Job 5. Yeah, I just read that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll read that again. It says, those who try to hide their plans from the Lord, <laughs> Yahweh, are as good as dead. So guess what? You Rockefeller, you're, you're as good as dead. Yep. You Rothschilds, you're as good as dead. The dead man McDonald's, walking. McDonald's, you're as good as dead. You Lee's, you're as good as dead. You uh, Oppenheimer's. Oppenheimer's, you are as good as dead. All you... Fitzgerald's. Right, all you <laughs> elites of Esau Edom, you are as good as dead. That's right. Okay. Your plans have been made there. The whole world knows your MO. Jig is up, nigga. <laughs> who do their work in secret and boast? Who sees us? Who knows what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, because according to the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 2. And these are the words of our Lord. Our Lord said in the red letter in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 2, for there is nothing covered such as their deep counsel, which they think that they're hiding. <laughs> Though to the average, it is unsearchable. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, not the hid that shall not be known. In fact, let's, for, just for edification's sake, look up the word covered here in Luke chapter 12, verse 2. Okay, it says, to cover on all sides, to conceal entirely, to cover up completely. Mm. So all things that are covered up completely will eventually be made manifest. Okay, for there is right. nothing covered. There is nothing covered on, on all sides. Mm. There is nothing covered entirely. There is nothing covered up completely. That shall not be known. That shall not be revealed. Mm. Excuse me. Now the head that shall not be known. And in another translation, in the NLT, the, the New Living Translation, the time is coming. And everything that is covered up will be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Mm. Also, in the NT, nothing is hidden that will not be revealed. And nothing is secret that will not be made known. So, by this reasoning, by default, you are as good as dead, Esau, Edom. For all your, your, your deep counsels, in, in which you have attempted to money to secrecy to hide for so long which is now being made manifest that's why the scripture says what shameful spewing is being shown on your glory according to what the book of habakkuk chapter what is that two yeah yep. um not two uh Let's try a tree. Yeah, it is two. It's two and sixteen. It's two and sixteen? Okay. Yeah. I have a good chapter two or sixteen. Throw out it, bro. If it says um, two you said two and sixteen? Done. I'm I'm a so a lot here, bro. I'm, I'm bugging. I'm a Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> lock here. Hey, lay off the drink, brother. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Put that cup down. Lock it, brother. <laughs> no, I'm not with you. I'm in uh, Hebrews. I'm, I'm using the blue letter. Okay. So just give me a second, one one second. Have no. I got it right. Okay. Okay, so bring it up. Bring it up. Yeah, this is um Hebrew. Uh, Habakkuk. Now you got me saying Hebrews. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 16. Yeah. It says, Thou art filled with shame for glory, 
Yeah, drink you're thou filled with shame for glory. See that? You're filled with shame mm -hmm. for glory. So in the place of glory, shame is, is, is filling. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead. It says, drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. So as one would drink down glory, drink down shame and let your foreskin be uncovered. In other words, let your shame be exposed before the whole world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because mm -hmm. of your pride. Go ahead. It says, the cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. And who's in the right hand of the heavenly father? Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. That's right. So on the right hand, because in the hands of the Lord there is a cup. Mm -hmm. According to Psalms, the 75th chapter, and the wine is what? Mm -hmm. Red. Red. So the cup of the Lord's right hand shall turn unto thee, O Esau, Edom, whose shame is being seen before the whole world, mm -hmm. who is sitting in the dust. Go ahead. It says, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. Shameful spewing shall be in your glory. Shameful spewing is going to be on your glory. And what's this man's glory? His kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's seeing that American Babylon the Great is, is actually not what they had imagined it to be. Mm -hmm. Not what they were taught of it to be or what they had imagined it to be from their youth all the way up to now their old age. Because when you come here to America, you got to pretty much work your ass off, slave your ass off until you you, you, that, you drop dead. Yep. So a lot of these nations, they come over here, they just, you know, work whatever the case may be, and they go right back home, you know, and they never come back. <laughs> Unless it's to see a, a doctor or something, but they never come back, man. Why? Because this, this, this is Babylon the Great, okay? This is the belly of the beast. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you come over here, man. You, you gotta have a strong mind to the spread of body. How about Shimei? I was shot. Go ahead. Yep, yep. This is our uh, Psalm chapter two, verse one. It says, "Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing?" And we know the heathens, you got that. the heathen nations, the, the heathen nations are every nation outside of Israel. All right, which Psalms the eighty third chapter pretty much explains to you what the rage of the heathen is you know what's their counsel what's their plot because ultimately you know um, brother he was going into it uh i believe it was yesterday with the brothers i was doing a lesson with the brothers yawasab and uh marakab and we was going into how really the council of the new world order and the depopulation agenda is really to get rid of us yeah you know, because moab is down for it you know ammon is down for it you know all the nations are down for the new world order <laughs> except for us and there's actual scriptures on that in the history, in the secular history and in the scriptures that we we are the nation that rebel against kings. You know, that's the reputation that we have amongst the heathen nations. They know that if they allow us to come back to our heritage and call on the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai, we're going to take over the world. We're not going to bow down to the idols of the, the um, you know, the gods of the heathen. You know, so they're raging in the idea that they pretty much want to get rid of us. When they talk about depopulating the earth, they really want to get rid of us because they know that we're scattered amongst the other nations as well. So they're saying they're going to kill, you know, you got billions of fucking Moabites. You got billions mm -hmm. of Ammonites. And America is not really the major population of the world. America only got, they said, like 350 to 400 million people. Yeah. But they said the earth's population is 8 billion. So where the hell are these other, you know, 7.5 billion people that they all over the rest of the world? And most and a lot of them, I'll say most are probably Israelites, you know, so you have Israelites scattered amongst the nations. They don't give a fuck about that. They're going to kill everybody because they want to really get rid of us, man. That's the whole point. Psalms 83rd chapter tells you what their real intention actually is, is to do away with Israel, because if they do away with Israel, they feel like in their vain, prideful mind, if they do away with the children of God, they will inherit the blessing because by default, you know, Jacob received the, the inheritance because that's what was set up by the will of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But they, if they can kill Jacob, then where else would the blessing go? It would have to go to them by default. So they feel like if they could just get rid of us and shut the truth down and, you know, eradicate the earth of the truth. I mean, yeah, if they could eradicate the truth, you know, out of the planet Earth, mm -hmm. that they could have full control and that nothing could ever stand up against them. But that, like it just said, 
the people imagine a vain thing and when you read it in the nlt the new living translation it says why are the nations so angry why do they waste their time with futile plans and when you go into that word futile it literally means a uh, vain pointless useless worthless ineffectual ineffective so it's, ne it's never going to work their plan that's why it says why do they waste their time this was all a big waste of time on esau's and for us we understand that through the spirit and power of your how about we had to go through this this is the will of the lord esau you know the earth is given into the hands of the wicked the lord allowed these devils to do what they're doing because that fits in with his purpose with his will see the heavenly father's will is not fruitless there's an ultimate goal at the end of this for us to appreciate righteousness like elder mm -hmm. Jacob, like our elder apostles taught us we never met the man but from what they told us he used to teach that we had to learn wickedness to appreciate righteousness so the lord's plans there's nothing futile about the lord's plans but what these devils have in their mind which is their own you know vain opinion their own deception is that the new world order and all this that they're going to kill us and erase jacob off of the earth just like cain wanted to do just like esau wanted to do it's the same intention it's that perpetual hatred but that doesn't fit in with the plans of the heavenly father all right they're not going to get useful results <laughs> like it says incapable futile is another definition is incapable of producing any useful results so they have a plan you know you may have a goal or whatever and you have an objective where you you're working towards that goal but at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you do esau you're not going to get any useful results you're not going to produce anything that you want to produce all right because the, what they're thinking in their in their mind is not according to the prophecy man it's not according to what jacob was promised which is esau is going to bow down to jacob that's what mm -hmm. the scriptures say man that's what the bible says so whatever they thinking in their mind well if we kill jacob we don't got to bow down to jacob ha 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 that shit is futile man it's never going to work all right the lord is going to throw that monkey wrench just like it says in job 20. it says um in the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits all right so you're never going to be able to fulfill that you running up a fucking sand hill bro you running up sand you know you, you it's like a you know them fucking dunes and shit in the middle of the desert and this devil literally has the uh mirage that's what they call it he has the delusion where he feels like he sees something and he's running towards it and then you look at it in reality it's futile he's never going to get there he's never going to obtain that and what he's seeing is nothing but a dream it's nothing but a vain vision it's not according to prophecy it's not according to the will of the lord yeah that's a good point that you made because you know they got different executive orders but one of the main things that come to my mind is on um, project megiddo to persecute the israelites you know come after us and that's why you got these camps that sold out you know you know beginning with the leadership because you're going to have the elect that's scattered amongst all these other camps you know the bulls by mercy but for the most part the leaders of like iuic isubk these 501 c3 organization you know camps these dudes sold out that's why they come up against us oh you know we teach sensationalism you know that's why that doctrine is, is off because they sold out they don't got the spirit of yahweh Shai, you know yep. they got the rex 84 the king alfred plan you know they got all these different military drills to come after our people to eradicate our people now i got this scripture real quick this is revelation 12 and verse 11. it says and they the elect of the nation of israel overcame him who's the him the so-called white man his chip his system his persecution it says and they overcame him by the blood of the land it ain't because we so powerful no it's through the spirit and power of the habibashamel shot see here at great millstone we always give all praise on and glory to your how about Shai. that's how we're going to overcome this man chip his martial law his concentration camps is through the blood of the lamb it says and by the word of their testimony somebody on this planet got 100 percent truth mm. and we bless that that's us beginning with the apostles the elders and the brothers and the believers all right it says the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death man come on we we all hate our lives man everything in this life is temporal your credit score temporal your house temporal your woman temporal your life is temporal everything is temporal it could be taken away from you we want 
the kingdom of heaven. We want a righteous kingdom, man. That's forever and everlasting. On this side, you ain't going to get that. You got these niggas, they sold out and shit. Look, all that shit is going to be burnt up by thermonuclear missiles. And this is what we're telling our people. We're telling our people, look, the day of the Lord is nearer than when we believe when we first came in the truth. If you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. You won't get caught up in Jacob's trouble. You're going to get caught up in that persecution. And the hedge of the Lord ain't going to be with you. So it's in your best bet. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you know, repent while you got time. I got a precept for you, bro. This is um John chapter 12, verse 25. It says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. Yeah, that's 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 these dudes that sell out. Because right. why would you sell out? Because you're unfaithful. You have a lack of faith. If you have a lack of faith, you got the mindset of look, I ain't trying to lose nothing tangible. I ain't trying to lose nothing carnal. It ain't nothing after this. I want to hold on to this forever. You don't you don't love Yahweh Shai. Well, Yahweh Shai said, He said, if you love me, you gotta bear my cross. You got to forsake everything. But there's also a reward for that. You won't get a hundredfold. But these dudes, they don't believe that. You know? Yep. It says, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. That's where we come in then. Beginning with the apostles, the elders, and the brothers of Great Millstone, the believers. Right. We Look, we know this shit is going to be destroyed, man. Lord willing, we are doing to the end. This shit is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. And we know that. Why? Because it's written. Everything that's recorded in these scriptures, it will and must come to pass. Right? So you dudes that sell out, keep keep selling out. You know, play your lot. Be them Judas goats. But the day is going to come where all the wrongdoing that you did, you're going to have to pay for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, when you mentioned Project Megiddo, I actually Googled it. And um, it came up on Wikipedia. <laughs> so I just want to read it real quick. Just to show you that it's definitely an agenda against us. Mm -hmm. All right. It says Project Megiddo was a report researched and written by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, released on October 20, 1999. Um, all right. So when you go down, Dan, look at that. The report, I'm going to keep reading. The, the report named followers of white supremacy, Christian identity, the American militia movement, black Hebrew Israelites, and a co apocalyptic cults as potential terrorists who might become violent in reaction mm. to, the new, to the new millennium. So they pretty much already set in the chess piece because they're saying, they're telling you right, right there that they're going to bring a new millennium. They're going to bring a new world order and whoever they perceive or assume could be a potential threat to what they're planning on bringing, they're going to come against those people. You don't even have to actually be a threat. If you are a potential threat, if you might become violent against the new millennium that they're bringing, they're going to put you under this um, this report of Project Megiddo. It says the report's purpose was to warn other domestic law enforcement agencies the potential for extremist criminal activity in the United States by individuals or domestic groups who attach special significance to the year 2000. Now, we all know. I mean, if you know, if you... Um, social conscious of israel you know if you know anything about what's been going on from going back to one west you know that the year 2000 was a monumental year all right because at that time you know the apostles and their elders that were before them they were anticipating the return of yahweh shai for the year 2000 all right they were like yahweh shai said in the book of luke you know you shall seek me you know i forgot exactly how it says it but roughly paraphrasing if i one get it brother, for you want yeah you can get it yeah the water brother you know they were they were um what does the scripture say um um about the day of the lord it starts with an e the word starts with an e it's escaping my mind come up as a thief or no no like how we are um like we earnestly you know expecting the day of the lord i forgot what the word is though but if you got the scripture go ahead i'll find what i'm talking about come this is luke chapter 17 and verse 22 it says and he said unto the disciples the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the son of man and ye shall not see it yeah so that when they when this fbi thing the the project megiddo they talking about groups who attach special significance to the year 2000 they was really directly attacking the apostles you know the elders mm -hmm. and the apostles because the significance that they attached to that year 
was what the brother just read in the prophecy. Yahweh Shai himself said, there's going to come a day where you're going to earnestly want to see me so badly. You're going to expect to see me, but you're not going to see me. And we could attribute that to the year 2000. None of us, you know, us three brothers here was in at that time. We wasn't in the camp. You know, we didn't know the truth or, or what have you, but we've heard, you know, from our apostles, we heard about that. And the word that I was singing was hasten, brother. That's what I was singing mm -hmm. about. Hastening. Uh, hastening the uh, the coming of Yahweh Shai. So when you in that spirit, you're not going to be down with this world. You're going to, like we just finished going through, you're going to hate your life in this world yep. because you hastening Yahweh Shai's. You, your life is with Yahweh Shai. It tells you that, I think, in Ephesians or Galatians, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken. It speaks about how we are dead, but our life is hid with Yahweh Shai. And we don't look towards the things of this earth. We look for heavenly things. You know, we store up our treasures in, in heaven with Yahweh Shai, which is for the next side, for the kingdom of heaven. But that's a threat to this world. Remember, treason, that's what they accuse the disciples of, man, during the time of Yahweh Shai. They said that in the book of Acts, I believe it's the 17th chapter or the 16th chapter, it speaks about how these men committed treason because they were speaking of another king, all right? When in the Roman Empire... Whatever Caesar, whoever was in power, that was the king. That was what the people uh, acknowledge as the king or God. You know, that's, that's what they say. Long live the king. Basically mm -hmm. saying, what? Everlasting life to the king. He's going to live forever. But when the disciples came, they're talking about the king of the Jews. You know, even when they put Yahweh on the, on the crucifix, they put that plaque over his head. Yeah. The king of the Jews. You want to make a quick point, bro? No, 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 no. I'm just agreeing with you. Agreeing. Yeah, so... What we're doing is actually is treason. It actually is sedition according to their law, according to their wicked decrees that they decree, Isaiah 10 and 1. What we're doing is actually illegal. Just speaking the words we speak in. Now it says, the report also stated the threat posed by extremists as a result of perceived events associated with the year 2000 is very real. The volatile mix of apocalyptic religious and new world order conspiracy theories may produce violent acts amid or aimed at precipitating the end of the world as prophesied in the bible wow so these people are literally directly attacking us man that's why the scripture says psalm 64 they're wet they wet their tongue like a sword and they shoot their arrows at the perfect even bitter words it's mm -hmm. talking about these fucking fbi documents and these agendas that they have that's literally against us, man. They ain't really, these Christians don't talk about the end of the world. Who's talking about the end of the world as prophesied in the Bible, which is what? Second Ezra 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world. Who's talking about that? The Hebrew Israelites, mainly Great Millstone. All right. So they literally have and have already prepared war against us, man. So when the, with the scripture that the brother read, if we could go back to that real quick, because you read Revelation 12 and 11. I would like to read verse 12. All right, reading on further, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So this truth that we're teaching is a threat to them, man. They know that they have but a short time. They know that it's the end of their rule, the end of their world. Why do they know that? Because the prophets came on the scene and told them. All right, according mm. to Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before thee and before me of old have prophesied against many countries, against great kingdoms of war, evil, so on and so forth, pestilence, famine. All right, which is basically the end of that kingdom. That's the job of the prophets in every generation. They were there to prophesy. The stream cut or I think his stream might have cut. Yeah, he probably fix it up. Oh, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Read that again. Um, yeah, the, you know, that was a good point. You know, the brother was saying because um, you know, pretty much these devils they in fear, you know, they know the prophet is back and great fear fell upon them, you know. And um I got this piece of end of whatever particular oh, kingdom was ruled. All right, yeah, you was, yeah, you was cutting in and out, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's Satan, bro. That's Satan. I was saying, like, now that the prophets is on the scene, I don't know, like, whatever the last thing I said, but 
basically the point is now that the prophets are back and prophesying the end of this man's kingdom he knows according to history and remember these devils they search out they search deep they know ancient history but they know that once the prophets of israel are on the scene that's the end of that kingdom mm -hmm. all right so they ready once they saw the prophets going back to abba bivens who who we believe through faith in the spirit if you can receive it as elijah the prophet once that man came on the scene that was really the end of their kingdom that that showed them that that was the end of their kingdom all right so all the plans that they got they got to rush man they got to hurry the fuck up you devils got to hurry up man you don't have much time you know you could talk about some 2030 we're praying to yahweh shah to shorten the days man we don't want no 2030 we don't want to be here for that long that's right and we praying to the and guess what the lord is hearing us and the lord is he is speeding up the time man but you devils you don't have much time you fucking old like the brother kodasha quiet always says man you devils are fucking old you, you, you niggas are dropping dead you know your rock david uh rockefeller just died well not just but you know david rockefeller died um evelyn evelyn rothschild just died you know so y'all y'all are dropping out man and you don't have another generation no you don't have another three and fourth generation to come back in reincarnation and see the new world order you don't have that much time man but that's why it says you're going to come with great wrath you know you're basically going to be so angry at us that you're not going to be able to contain yourself and you're going to get carnal and that's what the lord is going to raise us up according to isaiah 59 and 19 he's going to give us that power to overcome you through your shy yep edom is done <laughs> can you get isaiah right. 35? <laughs> go on can you get isaiah 35 bro Pop huh. shot. Isaiah 35. I mean Isaiah 35 in a while to the spirit. Start at I'm not Isaiah 35. I'm sorry. Ezekiel 35. Oh, Ezekiel 35. That's right. Ezekiel 35. What's up? What's up? It says uh, it? Ezekiel 35, verse 1. Is, Moreover, the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. And who is Mount Seir? Who is the government of Seir? Which is associated with Edom, the Edomites. They're the face that the Lord is against, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. So the Lord is against the high government, the high mountain of the Edomites. I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand through Yahweh who resides in the right hand of the heavenly Father Yahweh, against thee, and I will make thee most desolate out through thermonuclear fire, according to biblical prophecy. I will lay that city's waste, so Chicago is going to be laid waste. California is going to be laid waste. LA is going to be laid waste. Louisiana is going to be laid waste. New York City is going to be laid waste. According to biblical prophecy, the entire land is going to be laid waste. That's right. Okay. And thou, and thou shalt be desolate. Because guess what? Remember, these are not our words. These are the words of the heavenly Father Yahweh. Through Son Yahweh Shah, and we are the messengers beginning with our elder apostles, Bishop Ellis, and the elder brothers, on down to us younger men, and on down to men of like mind. Okay? A great millstone. Okay, the prophets that are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great and abroad. It says, And thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And I shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword during slavery, during the transatlantic slave trade, during the uh, Arabian slave trade. You have shed the blood. Go ahead, Q. You want to just make a statement? Go ahead. You want to make a statement, Kudar? Oh, no, no, no. I was just sniffling. So, my fault. It says, it says, shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Now, let me read that again. It's locked here. It says, Ezekiel 35, verse 5, it says, Because thou, the thou is referring to the Edomites, as 
had a perpetual hatred. So your hatred has been perpetual. Okay, perpetual. Just get up, get the definition of the word perpetual. It means never ending or changing. So your hatred against us has been never ending. It's been everlasting. It's been eternal. It's been endless. Okay. And we've been seeing you exhibiting that hatred towards us for many, many, many generations. From the beginning. Okay. Yep. Especially against the rest of the tribes besides the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay. Against the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Reuben, Issachar, Ephraim. Okay. Which, by the way, is ahead of the northern kingdom. We've seen you exhibited your hatred, your perpetual hatred against us throughout the past couple of generations, wherein we have been subject, which subject means under the rule, sub means under, jack means rule, of your system, of your kingdom, your filthy, vile and defiled, demoralized kingdom. And I shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, and which the sword is his blessing, okay, which comes in the form of the modern day gun. In the time of the calamity, during the time of slavery, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So you forwarded our afflictions, Esau. And are thou altogether <laughs> gonna go unpunished? Roughly paraphrase in scripture. No. You're not gonna go unpunished. Oh, forget about it. It was in the past. You know? Here, here's, 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 uh, here's 40 acres and a mule. Here's a couple billion dollars, you know? Here's a land, nigga. In the time that their iniquity had an end, therefore, as I live, save the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. So, does it mean that blood is going to literally take on the figure of a person and just start running behind you? No. <laughs> it's being metaphoric. Right. What's gonna happen is that all the bloodshed that you shed of our own of our people since you came back into power is gonna come back unto you double. In fact, let's look up the word, let's let's look this up in another translation. What is that, verse six? Yep. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter thirty five, verse six in the new king's james version matter of fact before i read that one i'll read the csb NLT? Oh, no CS csb this is therefore as i live this is the declaration of the lord yahweh i will destine you for bloodshed so you are destined nigga Negro. <laughs> you are destined for bloodshed and I will pursue, and it will pursue you. So bloodshed <laughs> will pursue you. You can't outrun bloodshed. That's right. That is bloodshed that is destined for you. Because what's yep. for you, going to be for you. And it will pursue you. <laughs> Since you did not hate bloodshed, it will pursue you. So you wanted, to, you wanted to, to have an affair with bloodshed, as a man would with a woman. Because guess what? Once you get in there, you stuck, man. You're locked in. <laughs> So, it's all good. You got a, you got, you got a date. You got a date. With you, <laughs> in other words, a date with death. A date with death. You got a date with death. You have a, you have a, you have an appointment with bloodshed. You have an appointment with bloodshed, and your time is coming. That's Job right. Twenty and five. Your time is coming, nigga. It says, and, I, and mm -hmm. it will pursue you since you did not hate bloodshed so if you didn't hate some therefore you love it right it will pursue you another translation the nlt bro read the nlt that's NLT. a good one too it says yep. as, sh as surely as i live says the sovereign lord yahweh real quick if i could say whenever the lord says as surely as i live it's a promise because remember the mm. name yahweh the name Yahweh in the ancient Hebrew is He is or He exists. So the Lord lives forever. The Lord is immortal. He so swears his so. Right. As long as I live, th this word cannot go out void. I just wanted to yeah. say that real quick, bro. 
Because I like how the Lord says that. As, as surely as I live, is like it's a guaranteed promise. Yeah, that's right. It says because he's destined for bloodshed. As mm -hmm. surely as I live, save the sovereign Lord Yahweh. Since you show no distaste for blood, because he's a bloody-minded man. He is a perverse man. Yep. He wears the beast, man. <laughs> it says, I will give you a bloodbath. Oh, shit. Damn. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> Got me. I will give you a bloodbath of, of your own. Your turn has come. So you're going to receive a particular type of bath. A particular mm -hmm. type of baiting fit for Edomite. Because remember, you're, you're a bloody-minded nation of people. Yep. You eat your food raw. You stink. You know, you don't uh, take pride in hygiene. In fact, <laughs> I uh, I was uh, I uh, saw this article, you know, got sent to me recently. Um, they're basically trying to cut down on how, um, how many times a week people should take a shower. This, they're basically saying at least, at least once or less than that, if possible, some shit, some shit like that. What? You know, yeah. to show you how how gross, how filthy these people are, man. Grotesque. So the Lord said, "I will give you a blood bath of your own." So you're yeah. gonna receive a, a bath that's of blood. <laughs> shit. Your turn has come. So your turn is coming, to you so. And you want to be able to escape. You have a date with death. You have a date with bloodshed. Okay? It is your destiny. So reading on in the King James Version of Isaiah of Ezekiel. Real quick, Isaiah. Bro. So Go I, I got the um Zondervan, right? Right here. The Zondervan Compact Bible oh, Dictionary. Con, 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 con. Ooh, that's a great bit. Con, bring it up. Because hey, we're in the spirit, we're doing uh the New Year's Eve of destruction, but but what What's the destruction that we talking about? What's the destruction? Is, is Edom's destruction, man? That's right. That's the destruction. It says Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures, which is what this is a prophetic scripture right now. We'll be reading Ezekiel thirty-five. Um, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. Mm. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. <laughs> man. So that's it, man. Edom is done, bro. Edom is literally the only nation in the scriptures that prophesied to be done away with it. And that's part of what we're reading right here. This bloodshed, this this date with death that this nation has, they're not going to be shown any mercy, man. You got it back, Quan Wife. I just wanted to bring that out real quick. I got something right. real quick, real up. quick. This is um, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. It says, that which have been is now. Talk about what? The spirits on the planet Earth. Everybody mm -hmm. been here before, right? The most high, he recycles spirits. It says, and that which is to be, that which is to be hath already been, right? Talking about reincarnation because you come back in the flesh, right? It says, and the most high requireth that which is past. So all the sins of the Edomite forefathers, how they rape, robbed, and murder us, how they destroyed our people, they took the fathers out the home. They turn our women into feminists. They got to pay for all that shit, man. Even in the past, when they didn't let us pass through their land, you know, you had Amalek surround us. They was about to kill us. You know what I mean? The most high, he remember that. That was it. Right. So reading on. So reading on in uh, Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 6. It says, therefore, as I live, save the Lord Yahweh, I will bear thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Save thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, and thy hills with smaller governments, and thy valleys with smaller governments. And in all thy rivers shall they shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And that should bring to mind Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 33. It says, I will make thee perpetual desolation, and thy city shall shall not return. Why? Because after the Lord has completely eviscerated this land, 
it will not return. It will only be inhabited by dragons and satires and wild beasts of the desert. Okay? Mm -hmm. So again, that last scripture should have been brought to mind, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be uh, gathered nor buried, but they shall be as done upon the face of the ground, roughly paraphrased in the scripture. Okay, right. it says, And thy sea shall, be, shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Okay, so judgment, big judgment and thing yep. is coming for you, Edomites, man. Sure. And there'll uh, be no escaping because you are destined to dance with blood, with death. Okay. Lord is gonna bring judgment upon you. So that's that's all that's all I got. Yeah, I got some. Um, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and 21. It says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh Shai cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And iniquity, we know iniquity means sin upon sin, and sin is a transgression of the law. And guess what? In Genesis 9 and 6, it tells you that if you shed man's blood, by men shall your blood be shed. All right. So this man has literally built up iniquity. All right. His track record or what that they would call today like a rap sheet is reached onto the heavens. All right. And now the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, on the behalf of Yahweh, his father, our heavenly father, he has to come down to this earth. He has to come out of his place to punish you devils, man. And not only you so-called white people, you Edomites, but all you people that have been joined on with him. Because it tells you in Isaiah the 14th chapter that they that are joined with him shall be thrust through with the sword. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? So you people that have drunk in the wine of this devil and you down with the New World Order and especially you big. We're not really even talking about you peons. I'm not even talking about the regular everyday uh, citizen of the earth. I'm talking about you elites of Moab. You know, you elites of all these other nations, man. You elites of uh, Ishmael, you so-called Arabs. All you nations, Yahweh Shai is coming to visit you in particular, man. Sure, so right Psalms on. 110, uh, let me, hold on real quick. Let me grab that. Psalm 110 and I think it's five. Just cause that's that's really what it's all about, man. Yahweh Shai coming back and judging this place. Psalms 110 and 5, it says, The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Mm. He shall wound the heads over many countries. All right, so remember, it's, uh, Revelation 19, when the apostle John saw Yahweh Shai coming back with the white horse, which symbolizes a great big chariot, a so-called UFO, UAP, he said he had many crowns on his head. What did the many crowns symbolize? The different countries, the different nations, the different kingdoms that he overcame, that he overthrew by war. It says he shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. How is he going to do that? By waging war on them in righteousness. All right. So remember, it says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. So you people is going to get punishment. The Lord is really going to bring great, severe judgment to this planet earth. For all the wickedness that's been going on, starting with the so-called white man, but it trickles down because nobody who it, it's a scripture. I think it's in Psalm that says, "Who will stand? Who will stand for me against the workers of iniquity?" Mm -hmm. yep. You know why is nobody on the earth fucking, you know, targeting this devil man and saying, "Nah, you fucking destroying the earth, bro." This man is destroying the very planet that we all have to live on, which first and foremost was created for the Israelites. All right, second Ezra the sixth chapter, the prophet Ezra said that he understood that. He said, If you made the earth for our sake, why don't we have a possession with the earth? Why did the heathens rule over us? And it's all according to prophecy why that is, but yet the point stands is that the earth itself, this planet that we on right now, was literally created just for us. It wasn't created for Esau, it wasn't created for none of the heathen nations. But look what they're doing with it. You know, they're destroying it, man. So the Lord got to stop these people. He has to come and stop this. He says the earth also shall disclose her blood. And what does that mean? You know how much blood is on this land, man? Remember, um, uh, 
uh, numbers, uh, 35 and 33, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. tells you that land gets defiled by blood, man. You can't, if you shedding all this blood everywhere on the planet Earth, you can't grow no crops on that land, man. Yeah. You can't yeah. live on that land. That land is cursed, man. Remember with Abel, when Cain slew Abel, it said his blood cried out, which meant really represented his spirit, his consciousness in, in heaven before the father and the son. He was complaining. You know, the, the it said the innocent blood, um, the just blood complains continually before the Lord. Mm -hmm. That that land is stained, man. This land is stained with blood, with innocent blood of the saints, man. So it's going to disclose it, meaning what? You have to pay for that. It's something that Elder Gaz said about like, three four weeks ago at camp about a month ago roughly he said at camp and it's stuck with me ever since he said israelite blood is not cheap man mm. you got to pay for that our blood is not cheap especially how much more yahweh shai's blood let's talk about that first man y'all yeah. shed yahweh shai's blood on this earth you killed him two thousand years ago all right if it wasn't for yeah. the will of the father he resurrected but you killed him you got to fucking pay for that man yeah sure. you try to eliminate him you try to destroy the king of kings and the lord of lords man you know, they, in their mind, they killed them. They say, yeah, we, we killed them. We got them. We the gods. We the, we the kings of the earth. And he resurrected. So he's coming back for you, niggas, man. Yeah. He says, you want to say, you want to make a point, brother? So like, Yeah, the life is in the blood. That's right. That's all. That's right. Yeah, it says, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So that links directly with Ezekiel 35 because... Basically, all the blood, like I said, since thou has not hated blood, blood shall pursue thee. The blood that's pursuing you is the, the blood of the people that you killed. It's not going to be covered no more. All the people that you slain, all the dead Israelites that you put to death, guess what? Every last one of them Israelites, starting with Yahweh Shai, you have to pay for that. And that's expensive blood. <laughs> like Elder Gaz said, that's expensive, bro. That comes at a hefty price, which means your life, your family's life, your children, your wives... Your grandmothers, your grandfathers, we're going to fucking slaughter you, man. Isaiah 14 and 21. All right? Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, man. It's already prepared for you. Because right now, it's like the earth is covering it up. Right now, it's like slavery happened. You know, the transatlantic slave trade, the massacre of the northern kingdom of Israel, the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans. It's like everybody forgot about it. Mm. It's like the earth itself forgot. It almost feels like the earth itself is not... You know um how you say it like responding to it like all this blood in this land man you got fucking bones man of our dead ancestors in this land and it's like the earth is just covering it it's like it's all covered up like it's just no judgment for it there hasn't been no repercussions for none of that but there is going to come a day when there's going to be re repercussion for it and i'm gonna read it right here too real quick this is psalm 58 let me pull it up Psalm 58 and 10 says the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance and we know vengeance means revenge this is what this all this is what this is all about man it's all about revenge happy shall he be that liveth to see the fall of his enemy that's revenge that's a righteous spirit of yahweh shai man it said vengeance burneth in his heart even says in the book of romans that vengeance don't even belong to us but it belongs to yahweh and yahweh shai so the heavenly father and his son is a god of war and a god of vengeance all right, the Lord is all about vengeance, and the righteous is obviously talking about the Israelites. That's the only ones that could be righteous, beginning with the elect. Shall rejoice. We're gonna rejoice when we see this. When we see you crackers running down the street and lions and all type of wild animals and beasts chasing you down and <coughs> apparitions and angels killing you. And when we see all this judgment being performed in America and all over the world, but we here in America, so we're gonna see it firsthand. You know the hand of the lord we're going to be rejoicing in that day lord willing it says he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked all right and the blood of the wicked is talking about the blood of esau edom and it's symbolic we don't we're not literally going to do that that's you're not supposed to deal with blood you're not supposed to be touching nobody's blood and all that washing your feet in blood it's not talking about literally it's talking about in the ancient world you had customs of you know back then we didn't have like boots and shit like that we didn't have timberlands and hiking boots so when men would take these long journeys and be traveling, their feet would be real dirty, caked up with all type of mud and, you know, whatever the journey went. There was a custom in the ancient world that when you went to somebody's house, they'll prepare you a uh, basin of soap and water for you to wash your feet. Even like Yahweh Shai did to his disciples. That was a gesture of humility. 
So when you have a guest over to your house, you know, you accommodate to them. When it's saying we're going to wash our feet in the blood of the wicked, it's like a long journey. You know, this journey of this devil beating us down and killing us. And we never got no vengeance on him, but we finally going to get vengeance on him, man. We're going to dance in your blood. I think there's another scripture that says something like that. <laughs> We're going to dance in their blood, man. Mean, and we, it's, again, it's not literal. It's talking about us rejoicing at your downfall and us being basically like soothed. Because when that man finally got to his destination and, and, you know, that bucket of warm water with soap was prepared for his feet for that long journey that he just took, it would be like a soothing, you know, relaxing moment. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's going to be when we slaughtering you. We're going to have smiles on our face, man. You know, the fucking Kool-Aid man busting through the damn wall and shit. That's how we're going to be with that big ass fucking smile. And we're just going to be slaughtering you with a two edged sword in our hand. Like the scriptures say, we're going to be executing vengeance upon you. It says, so that a man shall say verily, which means truly, facts, like Jake would say today, is facts. <laughs> there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. So right now the earth is not saying that because, like I like I mentioned earlier, like the scripture that I read previously, the earth is covering up the slain. You know, there hasn't been a judgment for what's been done on this planet earth, but the most high, he's been hiding himself. But when this day actually does finally come, all right, everybody's going to know. They're going to say, yeah, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, the God of them Israelites, that's a God that judges the earth. He's a righteous God. And he repays all forms of wickedness and iniquity. He doesn't let nothing slide. That's even in the scripture. It said um, repaying, um, I forgot, in Numbers 14, it speaks about, you know, the, in uh, Nahum 1 and 3, you know, the Most High doesn't acquit the wicked, man. He doesn't let you go even to the third and fourth generation. He's going to repay you. All right. So this, this is going to be a beautiful day when the whole earth in one accord and in one tune could say, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is king and Lord. And he's a righteous God. And he's a God of the Israelites. You know, because the Lord is going to uh, exact vengeance for us, man, for everything that we had to go through. We went through things that nobody in this planet earth has experienced. And still to this day. Nobody knows what the fuck, the, especially the men of the Lord, is really going through, man, in their everyday life. Cool. You think there's not going to be a judgment for this, man? There surely will be. All right? You got it, bros. Yeah. Since you said that, that was a good point. Because when the Lord threw Yahweh Shah the shortest place, their names is going to be glorified. I got this real quick. This is Ezekiel 39 and 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity what's iniquity sin upon sin why did our people go through all the captivities under the heathen for following the customs of the heathen you know believing in their philosophies raised raising their children up to keep the heathen um customs that's what put our people in a gentile state of mind right so it says because they have trespassed against me how do we it's do a, that it's a verse you read it's a lot here, bro um ezekiel 39 and 23. all right yeah i'm right here come I'm going to read it from the top, Ezekiel 39 and 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. That's why Yah allowed to rule over us, make money off our oppression. This is how you're able to do this, because we're under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 for sin against the Lord. So it says, because they have trespassed against me, therefore had I my face from them. And that's why these heathen was able to conquer us the way how they conquered us, because the Lord was angry at us. It says... And gave them into the hand of their enemies, the heathen nations, so filled they all by the sword. Mm. It says, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Most High, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, meaning the Lord is going to deliver us, right? Through Yahweh Shai, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. That's the southern and the northern kingdom, right? The so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, Native American Indians, right? Beginning with the elect. It says, and will be jealous for my holy name. All right? Meaning what? The Lord is going to show that he's still with Israel ultimately. It says, cool. after that, they have borne their shame. That's what we're going through now. The curses of Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. It says, and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me. So the Lord through Yahweh Shai is going to take sin away from us. He's going to give us those new bodies, right? He's going right. to clean us up. Because we in this filthy flesh. We can't keep the Lord perfectly. The mm -hmm. justification comes to what? Faith. Do you how I? It mm -hmm. says when they dwelt safely in their land, 
and none made them afraid. It says, when I have brought them again from the people, meaning the Lord delivering us from the heathen, right? It says, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. So, the, yo, the nations, they're going to look at us, they're going to be like, yo, we got to be like them. You see how holy they look? You know, yep. we don't even get to see their woman walking out on the street. Yo, that's <laughs> going to feel good, man. Oh, yeah. You know, God. You know our women, they're going to be beautiful again. They're going to be in order. Our nation going to be in order. No yep. more fucking nick. You know what I mean? Like, damn, that's going to feel good. God. Let me just finish it up. It says, then shall they know that I am the Lord, their power, or Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, which caused them to be led into the captivity among the heathen, but I have gathered them unto their own land, which is what? The land of Israel. Mm -hmm. It says, and have left none of them anymore there. It says, neither will I hide my face anymore from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, save the Most High. So this is what's going on, man. We prophesying your destruction, all right, yep. before the king, Yahweh Shai, comes back to deliver us and set up the kingdom. And we look forward to that, man. We powered the hell up. You know, this <laughs> prophecy come to pass. Yo, we amped up. We happy because right. our redemption drove nigh, you know? Mm -hmm. That was it with that, though. Yeah, hey, if y'all brothers got anything else, you know, any closing scriptures, we could just, you know what I'm saying, wrap it up. Yeah, I said what I had to say, man. Hey, you're almost out of here. That's right. You're almost out of here. That's oh. right, bro. Hey, so with that, Khan. Khan, Khan. All right, so yeah, we're going to wrap this up. You know, Lord willing, the hopeful elect was edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. We're going to give all praise, honor, and glory once again to Yahweh Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Hey, uh, another 40 minutes, you know, and the Apostle Tahar is going to announce the, the coin, you know, the phrase of 2023, man. And Lord willing, you know, this year go faster than the last year, and we be out of here. You know what I'm saying? We hastening the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai. So with that, we're gonna say Shalom. 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 <laughs> hey,